When the first humans fled to caves to escape from thunder, lightning and wild animals, they were actually applying behaviorism thousands of years before the development of the theory. Behaviorism can thus be considered as a way of learning that is old as humanity and that made humans respond in a specific manner to the influences surrounding them. Behaviorism is a learning theory that claims that we are born with a blank slate mind. Then we learn through continuous interaction with the environment. Thus our behavior is a result of the consequences. And since environmental conditions can be controlled for animals, they can also be for humans, as both learn similarly. Pavlov, in his classical conditioning theory, noticed that dogs drooled naturally in an unconditioned response when given food, but they didn't drool when hearing a ringing bell alone, as it is a neutral stimulus. However, when he associated the ringing bell with the food, dogs drooled. Later, they drooled on hearing the bell only. Thorndike used a puzzle box to test the laws of learning. Placing a cat in the box, the cat reached a fish placed outside after several trials. He put forward a law of effect and exercise, stating that any behavior followed by pleasant consequences is likely to be repeated, while that followed by unpleasant consequences is likely to be stopped. Watson and Rayner extended Pavlov's research on humans. They exposed little Albert to a white rat. The boy showed no fear. The next time Albert was exposed to the rat, Watson made a loud noise. Naturally, the child cried. After repeatedly pairing the white rat with the noise, Albert began to cry simply after seeing the rat. Skinner created the operant conditioning chamber as a variation of the puzzle box. It was used to teach a rat to perform certain actions, like pressing a lever in response to a stimulus. When it correctly performs the behavior, the chamber mechanism delivers food as a reward. This led to studies in conditioning and training through reward-punishment mechanisms. Operant conditioning is divided into two categories, reinforcements and punishments, each divided into positive and negative. After a desired behavior, a positive reinforcement means providing a reward, like praising a student with an A score, while a negative reinforcement means removing an unpleasant outcome, like relieving a student from an assignment. A positive punishment means providing an unfavorable outcome post an undesirable behavior, like dismissing a noisy student from class. A negative punishment means removing a favorable outcome following an undesired behavior, like the teacher taking a student's cell phone for using it during lecture. Andura in the 1960s introduced the notion of observational learning where behavior is learned from observing the environment. Children observe different people around them and imitate their behavior. People who are observed are called models, such as parents, family members, characters on TV, friends or teacher. So in classical conditioning we learn through association. Two stimuli are linked together to produce a new learned behavior. In operant conditioning, we learn by the consequences of our behavior, but in the social learning theory, we learn through our interactions with others. In addition, it accepts both classical and operant conditioning principles. Behaviorism has many strengths. Its outcomes can be easily reached through manipulating learners by reinforcements and punishments. Its outcomes can also be easily measured or quantitative in nature simply because they are easy to observe. So behaviorism outcomes are always clear to the learner. Furthermore, behaviorism has shown promising results with students having learning disabilities. It can help a student master a subject because it breaks large tasks into small steps and involves a great deal of repetitions. In fact, behaviorism is the best theory when a change in behavior is required. But behaviorism is criticized for being too simplistic as even minor responses to a stimulus require processing vast amount of information. Also behaviorism does not take into consideration a person's values, feelings, moods and perceptions. So it's a one size fits all theory. Behaviorism is also deficient because if the stimulus for the correct response does not exist, the response will not occur. It also fails to account for other types of learning that can take place without stimuli because learners are motivated by other values. It also encourages students to be more passive in a teacher-centered environment. Nevertheless, there are other useful behaviorism tools teachers use to motivate students, as providing timely and positive feedback, the presence of behavioral objectives and outcomes in curriculums, training and development of skills, competency-based education, and programmed and computerized instructions. 
So in order to achieve the outcomes of higher order thinking in higher education, behaviorism has to be blended with other theories, such as cognitivism, which emphasizes storing, processing, and remembering, and constructivism, which focuses on making meaning. For example, in educational technology, computer software rewards the learners who master it by moving them to the next stage, as in computer games. But to develop the software, the learner becomes the key in an interactive-based environment. What share each theory occupies in total learning theories differs across disciplines and levels. For example, e-learning and online courses depend more on constructivism as they are student-centered. Similarly, in languages, learning depends more on constructivism and people's innate ability to learn. Since different theories apply to different situations and learners, why do we have to bother with theory? Without knowing other theories of learning and implementing them, humans might still be hiding in caves to escape from thunder, lightning, and wild animals, unable to be open to other possibilities and better responses. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed it. Ashraf Bakkar, Iman Ismail, Ghada Abdel Latif, Hiba Hilmi, Muhammad Subih.